We're going to turn your mirrorless camera into a cinema camera. But first, what makes a cinema camera a cinema camera? I've heard people say it's about how good the image and the specs are. But others say it's more about how it can be adapted and customised to enhance its functionality in any shooting scenario. And I'm more in this camp because the image of affordable cameras these days is so good and you can barely tell a difference unless you start pixel peeping really close. And there's nothing you can't do on these smaller cameras that you can do on a cinema camera just by adding some affordable accessories. For example, if you want more video monitoring features like false colour or focus peaking, then you just need to add an external monitor, problem solved. If you want more precise manual focusing, then and just add a follow focus system. Plus, cinema lenses are starting to accommodate more mounting options, which means you can give most cameras, including this tiny little Lumix S5 camera, the cinema lens treatment. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what accessories and lenses that I've added to my rig that have really helped my filming workflow. This video is part two, building upon this smaller handheld rig that I had last year. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I definitely recommend watching it because it's gonna show you the first half of the build, why I chose the specific parts that I did for the ideal weight distribution distribution and the perfect monitor mount. But I have included the entire list of all the parts that I've used down in the description below and included all the links so if you did want to check them out then you'll be able to see them. So this is where I ended up after the last video. I've got the cage, I've got the top handle and the side handle, the perfect monitor mount, follow focus and the matte box. And from here I wanted to add a base plate and rails for four reasons. Without a base plate the camera rig wouldn't sit flat on a table depending on what lens I was using or matte box. I could add a rail based matte box for faster lens and filter changes. I can mount a follow focus system further along if I'm using a longer zoom lens. And finally, I wanted to add a V-mount battery to power everything. This is the base plate that I chose, but I also added the Manfrotto tripod plate underneath so I can quickly mount it to any tripod. I'm using the small rig carbon fiber 9 inch by 15 mil rods that I fit directly to the base plate. Now when you're choosing the length of rods, it's important to think about what accessories you're going to add to your rig. For example, I want to add a V-mount battery to the back of my camera, but then I also want to be able to mount a follow focus system far enough forward to accommodate longer lenses. So I need to make sure that I've got something long enough to do that but also short enough to keep it nice and compact. I also added the Falcam F38 quick release system to the base plate and the underside of my cage so that I can quickly detach it from the rest of my rig if I want a smaller more compact handheld rig. I actually use a variety of V-mount batteries. I've got the Nano one which is a nice small battery if I want to go a bit, little bit lightweight. Swit batteries, great things, last ages and then Small Rig kindly sent me this brand new one, the 99, which is awesome. It's got a display on there and it's got loads of output options, including two DC outputs, USB-A, USB-C, D-Tap as well. And then to mount the V-mount battery, I went for this Small Rig plate, which is a little bit larger than I wanted to. However, it gives you a bit more flexibility because it's got an extra D-Tap out and then a bunch more DC outs and another USB out there. Just from this one battery, I've got even more options and it's got this little light indicator on there. I love a light indicator. So I've actually been sent these DZO Cata zoom lenses, which are actually an L mount. You can get them in different mounting options. I love how cinema lenses are starting to incorporate more mounting options for your cameras now, rather than just this Canon mount. I know a lot of people love autofocus and they wonder why they would even use a cine lens because it's manual, but the benefits are so good because manual focus, you can just have more control over it. You don't get any of that pulsing, but mainly you can get a smoother, more natural looking focus because it's not electric electronic, it's fully manual. If you're new to the cinema lens world and you want a more affordable option, then I highly recommend these Seven Artisan Prime lenses. I've been using them a bunch now, I've got the 50mm and the 35mm, and they're just great. If you're new to manual focusing and cine lenses, these are a great starting point because they've got a nice smooth focus, de-clicked manual aperture control on the lens itself, and they're not going to break the bank. It's worth noting here that you want to make sure that the weight distribution is right across the length of the camera. As you can see, this is leaning forward a little bit so I can just pull everything back and then that will make it a little bit more central and I don't have to worry about balancing the camera when I'm filming. The next addition was going from the manual follow focus system to the wireless follow focus system. I did a video all about this, you can check that video out here, but it's the Axum brand. Highly recommend. You get the powered focus wheel and it's really high torque so it works on big heavy duty lenses, but you can also hook that up and plug it in to use as a standalone unit, not wireless. Then I've also 
also got the Axoon Cineview SE, which is a wireless transmission. That lets me connect the signal from this camera and this monitor up to a separate monitor via this little thing. I've basically made this wireless monitoring system myself. I've added a cage, the focus wheel, and this handle here so it's a little bit easier to hold. Now, if you're on set, there'll be a crew of people monitoring what's being captured at the time of filming and somebody else pulling focus wirelessly from the camera operator so that they can concentrate on framing up the shots and the camera movements. And I wanted to have this feature as well. And you might be thinking, well, I work alone, so what's the point? But this has helped me tremendously because it means that I can set the camera up, use my cinema lenses, I can go to where I need to be and using the wireless monitoring system with the focus wheel on it, I can get the perfect focus, check my exposure and everything without having to keep going back and forth to the camera. I can even give it to a client so that they can watch what's happening in real time. And if they want to make any suggestions or changes, they can do it there and then without having to wait for the delivered project and then wasting a load of time. And if you don't have a separate monitor, you can also use your phone or your tablet. I almost forgot as well, one of the biggest changes I made, and one of my favorite things on this, the HDMI clamp. So because the S5 takes these micro HDMI cables, which I really don't like, they're very flimsy. It's a good idea to have a clamp so that it keeps it nice and secure when you've got anything plugged in. Because the last thing you want to do is bust that while you're moving something, ruin the port, and then have to pay for a new port replacement. So these things are definitely worth the investment. The only thing I don't like about it is it's got this tightening thumb screw there and that means you can't pull your screen out like that that's as far as you can go so they need another way of being able to tighten it that's out of the way of that screen I had a lot of people asking me in, in the last video what do you do about a microphone well honestly any microphone that you mount directly on the camera isn't the ideal audio solution because you're not really going to use that audio unless you're super close to the person talking if you're doing a documentary style thing you really want to get as close to the subject as possible with a boom arm or some sort of lapel mic on the person. Really, you'd only use this microphone for scratch audio as a backup so you can sync the two later on. For example, I'm using the Ninja 5, it's got a fan, so there's gonna be noise and that microphone is right next to that, so I wouldn't use that as your main audio. What you could do for more options is use a wireless mic, like the Rode Wireless Go, and mount the transmitter to a cold shoe on the cage, and then you could just use the mic receiver on the subject, maybe even plug a lav mic or a shotgun mic into that receiver and use it that way if you want. So that gives you loads more options rather than just mounting the camera on top if you need it. So just by adding a few affordable accessories, we now have a fully functioning cinema camera built from the body of a Lumix S5, which is one of the smallest and most affordable cameras on the market today. And it's amazing. It makes me really excited to go out and use it. Now, if you want to take this one step further and go into full beast mode, then I definitely recommend checking this video out because it's going to give you even more flexibility and control over your camera. Or if you just wanted to see part one of this build, then check out this video here and I will see you in the next one.